Let's talk about manufacturing or creating urgency. And there are two different ways that you can look at urgency. You can look at it internally or you can look at it externally. And I think back to when I was in college, I was kind of a slacker, for lack of a better term, till I kind of grew up and came into my own. But I think about, you know, when we used to have papers assigned and tests that we would have to take and different things, I was the king of pulling all-nighters right beforehand. Like, assign a paper, I wouldn't write a single word, and then the last two nights before the paper was due, I'd pull back-to-back all-nighters, crank out the entire thing, turn it in, go crash afterwards, and kind of the rest is history. And that's the form of urgency that most people are usually familiar with. They're familiar with the external form of urgency, where it's like, you know what, I know I have to have this report due, I have to turn it into my boss by this date, I know I need to hit this quota by this time, I know that I need to get in shape for this vacation on this date. Like, you have these external pressures and these external kind of forms of urgency uh, guiding your behavior. And certainly, is that important? Yes, it's very important for all of us from time to time. But if you really look at all performers and how they're able to do what they do and be successful and achieve a lot day in and day out, is they found a way to create an internal form of urgency that's you know irrelevant to all these external pressures and deadlines and demands. And they do that in a very specific way. And really, there are three different ways that they do it that have helped me that I think will obviously um, hopefully help you as well. And the first one of those is, is to clarify the consequences of inaction, I guess I would call it. Tony Robbins would call this kind of gaining leverage on different things. But it when you clarify the consequences of inaction, It preys on a powerful psychological principle where the fear of loss is always going to be greater than the strength of gain. So in other words, instead of thinking about, you know what, like if I really have urgency towards this thing that, you know, isn't necessarily due, let's say a paper due the next day, but if I have this urgency right now for something that's off in the distance, you're not necessarily thinking about always what you'll gain by achieving that, but you're thinking about what you lose if you don't achieve it. So in other words, you know what, you're in sales and it's the beginning of the month and most salespeople will usually kind of take a breather at the beginning, the first week or two of the month, and and then they'll kind of ramp up their game towards the end where they know it's like, oh my God, I have this external form of urgency. I got to hit my quota. I've got to hit my numbers. And they will work substantially harder later on in the month than they will early. Well, it's looking at it and it's saying, you know what, if I don't work hard early, what is that going to cost to me or what are the consequences of that inaction? I'm going to have to work so much harder towards the end. I'm going to see my family less. I might not hit my quota. I might not get my bonus. You know what, if I need to get into shape for something, okay, well, what's that going, what's that inaction going to cost me if I don't do it? Well, it could potentially have health problems. Well, I won't look good on the beach, you know, whatever it might be, but there are consequences to inaction. And if you can have that in the forefront of your mind, in the forefront of your psychology, it's going to be a very powerful thing to get you motivated and to help you create urgency towards whatever you're looking to achieve or whatever you're looking to accomplish. So that's the first part. Second part is to select the causes of complacency. And usually when you look at this, it's there are a few different ways you can look at it, but the most often one when you're looking at complacency is typically the people you surround yourself with. Maybe you heard me talk in another video about the big five where we're typically the average of the five people we are closest to, who we surround ourselves with every single day. And it's very seldom that you're going to find that, you know what, you probably don't have a lot of urgency in your life, but all of the people you're surrounding yourself with are really out there and are getting after it and, you know, have a high amount of of urgency in theirs. How it usually works is, you know what, if you're feeling a little bit complacent, which to me is just the opposite of having urgency, and and there's nothing wrong with saying that because we all get to that point in our lives from time to time, but to look at it and to say, you know what, usually if I'm a little bit complacent, the people around me are probably complacent as well. So I think it's actually taking a step back and looking at it and saying, you know what, who am I surrounding myself with and are they pulling me up or are they kind of keeping me in this spot where I'm just good right here, where complacency is just kind of the norm and just kind of the standard with which I operate. So that's the second part. And then the last part is just to celebrate your small wins. 
or, or focus on the progress, not the perfection. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to have urgency in our life, whether we're talking about a quota that's a month or a quarter or a year away or whatever it might be, or some health goal that's way off in the distance, or just anything that you're looking to achieve that seems like it's very far out. It's very difficult to create urgency because it just seems like it's so far away. And what outperformers are phenomenal at is they're able to say, you know what, I have this long-term goal, I have this long-term objective and thing that I want to do and I want to hit, but they're able to backtrack it and they're able to say, you know what, I need to take these small steps, I need to lay one brick at a time and I'm going to celebrate each of those bricks and each of those steps each time that I do it. You know, if you're able to do that and if you're able to just keep continuing to do that over time, that's what end up, ends up making all the difference in the long run because you're just celebrating those small things instead of kind of becoming demotivated or not having that internal form of urgency because something just seems too far off. So hopefully those three things make sense. Hopefully they serve you. Again, just quickly to recap them, clarify the consequences of inaction. Look at the fear of loss being greater than the strength of gain. What will it really cost you if you don't have an internal form of urgency right now driving you? Like, you know, that's how you get that leverage, as Tony would say. Um, and, you know, what is that going to cost you in the long run? And then the second part, select the, uh, the causes of complacency. Look at the people you're surrounding yourself with. And then also celebrate those small wins and what you're doing along the way. If you do those things, I guarantee you're going to be successful and you will absolutely outperform the norm.